In the bustling streets of Hong Kong, where skyscrapers meet the stars, lies a tale not just of expatriates, but of human connections, loss, and discovery. This is The World of the Expatriates by Janice Y.K. Lee, a novel that paints a vivid portrait of life in an expat community, so alluring it's caught the eye of Amazon Prime. But before you dive into the series with popcorn in hand on January 26th, let's pause and ponder a question as old as time, or at least as old as screen adaptations. Should you read The Expatriates before streaming it? Are the pages of Lee's novel a key to unlocking a richer viewing experience? Or will the series on Amazon Prime outshine its literary counterpart? Stay tuned as we unravel this novel to screen journey, navigating through the streets of Hong Kong and adaptation, and asking, as always, should you read before you watch? Let's embark on a journey to the heart of Hong Kong as seen through the eyes of Janice Y.K. Lee and the expatriates. This novel, A Tapestry of Expat Life, weaves the stories of three American women living in an expatriate community in Hong Kong. First, we meet Mercy, a young Korean-American graduate adrift in the complexities of adulthood. Then there's Margaret, a mother grappling with an unspeakable loss. And finally, Hillary, who faces the challenges of a faltering marriage and the desire for motherhood. Their lives intersect and collide in ways that are as unexpected as life itself, capturing the essence of grief, motherhood, identity, and the search for belonging. We're going to dig a little deeper into the story, but I'll include a timestamp here and in the description so that you can skip it if you don't want spoilers. Diving deeper into the heart of the expatriates, we find ourselves entangled in an intricate web of its characters' lives, each thread revealing the complexities and contradictions of expatriate existence. Mercy's story is striking. A recent Columbia graduate, she finds herself in Hong Kong burdened by the expectations of success. Her involvement in a tragic accident leads to a downward spiral fueling a narrative about guilt, cultural identity, and the struggle to find one's place in a foreign land. Margaret, on the other hand, is a picture of maternal strength and vulnerability. The disappearance of her child becomes a harrowing tale of loss and despair. Her narrative delves into the emotional landscape of a mother's love and the unfathomable pain of losing a child. Set against the alienating backdrop of an expat community, Hillary's struggle with infertility and a distant relationship with her husband offers a stark look at the pressures of societal norms and the desire for motherhood. Her decision to adopt a child from a teen mother intersects with her internal conflict, painting a complex picture of what it means to be a woman, a wife, and a mother in an expat community. More on that later. Amidst these personal dramas, Lee skillfully captures the transient nature of expat life, the sense of being neither here nor there, belonging everywhere and nowhere. As we anticipate the Amazon Prime adaptation, the question arises, will the series maintain the novel's intricate exploration of these themes? Can it visually capture the essence of each character's journey and the pulsating spirit of Hong Kong. While The Expatriates has garnered praise, it's not without its critiques. Some readers have found a disconnect with the characters, feeling that the emotional depth didn't quite resonate as intended. Some readers say they've learned nothing about Hong Kong from this book, or people living in Hong Kong, and have said that this story could have taken place anywhere in the world and it would have made no difference. The setting seems almost an afterthought, 
a cliff note on a story about women dedicated to domestic labor and in search of fulfillment through their husbands or families. Critics have also pointed out the novel's portrayal of the Hong Kong community, critiquing it for falling into stereotypes. This depiction has sparked discussions on the authenticity of cultural representation and the challenges of portraying a diverse city like Hong Kong in literature. Furthermore, the story's approach to motherhood has been a point of contention. Some readers and reviewers feel that the novel idealizes motherhood almost to the point of propaganda. The narrative suggests that motherhood could be a panacea for the character's struggles, a perspective that's been debated for its realism and its implications. These criticisms add another layer to the discussion, especially as the Amazon Prime adaptation approaches. Will the series address these concerns, or will it follow the same path, potentially amplifying these critiques? Adaptations often walk a fine line between staying true to the source material and offering new interpretations. The Expatriates is no exception, and its transition to the screen will undoubtedly be scrutinized for how it handles these complex and sensitive issues. As we reach the end of our journey through the streets of Hong Kong and the Expatriates, we're left with a tapestry of emotions, thoughts, and questions. Janice Y.K. Lee's novel, rich with complex characters who maybe didn't quite hit the mark, and set against the vibrant backdrop of Hong Kong, which also seems to have missed somewhere along the line, offers a unique glimpse into the expatriate experience. The upcoming Amazon series promises to bring these stories to life, adding a new dimension to Lee's narrative. But as with any adaptation, the true test lies in its reception by both the fans of the book and new audiences alike. Will the series capture the novel's essence? How will it tackle the criticisms regarding character connection, cultural representation, and the portrayal of motherhood? These are questions that only time and viewership will answer. Whether you've read the book or are waiting for the series, The Expatriates invites us to reflect on themes of identity, belonging, and the complexities of human emotion. It's a journey worth taking, in whichever form you choose. So the question remains, should you read the book before watching the series? In this case, my recommendation is no. I'm holding out hope that Lulu Wang will bring a different perspective to this story. Stitch together the questionable breaks in narrative, create characters that we want to watch, and will give more grace to the people of Hong Kong. The Expatriates as a novel left me feeling confused, considering the writer grew up in Hong Kong. I felt confused by the white lens that it was seemingly written through. Maybe it's a brilliant choice to try and have us relate to these women, putting their pain in front of us so starkly while showing us how privileged they are, page after page. The wealthy upper class luxuriating in a foreign country, complaining about the insignificant, while they live far above the means of those native to the area. Maybe the point is to challenge the reader to be able to feel empathy for these people 
and show that despite their privilege, they too can suffer tragedy. If that was the idea, for me, it fell flat. Instead of empathizing with them, I found myself annoyed most of the time. Not because their tragedies aren't valid, but because in the midst of them complaining about the hired help, or the locals, or how they missed their things from the U.S., they come off as being extremely selfish, which made the characters unlikable and almost one-dimensional. Whether you've read the book or are waiting for this series, The Expatriates invites you to reflect on these themes. Themes of identity, belonging, and the complexities of human emotion. If you enjoyed this shallow dive, don't forget to do all the things. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on future explorations. But let's continue the discussion below. What are your thoughts on the expatriates? Will you be reading the book, watching the series, or both? We promise to reply to all of your comments because we are obsessed with your attention. Until next time, whether on the page or on the screen, don't forget that there's more to explore through the literary lens. <laughs>